Hello, I'm Ben Woodruff, and today I'm here with a rock dove. Now, a rock dove is the correct name for the bird we call a pigeon. The common pigeon that we see in our freeway overpasses and that we feed in our parks, well, that is actually a rock dove and it was domesticated by humans over 3,000 years ago. It's a really long history. Now when most people hear the word pigeon, they're very dismissive and just think of regular pigeons around in the city scrounging for anything they can eat. But the family is very diverse and boasts some spectacular individuals like the giant Victoria crown pigeon, uh, the green pigeon, there's actually several species of green pigeon, and my personal favorite, the tropical Nicobar pigeon. All of these are members of the pigeon family. Now, these pigeons are a distant cousin of the bird I want to talk about today, which is the passenger pigeon. Whereas the rock dove is a non-native species that's been introduced to America, the passenger pigeon was a native species that ranged all across the eastern United States. This beautiful species was sexually dimorphic, with the male being larger and more colorful than the female. There used to be billions of passenger pigeons in the Americas, and records indicate that at times they would literally blacken the sky. They ate seeds and plant material, small insects, and even full-size acorns. Records indicate that they actually ate these and swallowed them whole. Passenger pigeons look quite similar to morning doves, and it used to be believed that they were closely related, but DNA tests have shown that the band-tailed pigeon in, in the western United States is actually its closest cousin. Many Native American tribes actively hunted the passenger pigeon for food, and when European settlers arrived in the Americas, they also began hunting the species. With flocks in the millions flying overhead, hunters shot as many as they could. It seemed as though they would never run out. European shotguns shooting out a spray of BBs were much more effective at killing large numbers of pigeons than a bow and arrow. This is where a more sinister part of the story comes in. If you've ever heard of shooting clay pigeons and wondered why they're called clay pigeons when they're just clay discs, well, here's where it comes from. The modern practice involves a shotgun shooter being at the ready, they call out pull, and a clay pigeon is launched from a device into the air, and they do their best to shoot it out of the sky. It's a test of marksmanship and is actually a lot of fun. But it used to be different. Throughout the 17 and 1800s, elaborate net systems were used to catch thousands of passenger pigeons at a time. Then gentlemen would gather together for a sporting shoot, and the live pigeons were thrown up as targets. Hunting is one thing, but it's sad to think of a life being reduced to no more than a target just because its species is numerous. I'm glad the times have changed and clay pigeons are now used for target practice. It's important to note that there were many factors that contributed to the passenger pigeon going extinct, and we don't know all of them. We know overhunting was part of it. We know that uh, deforestation actually played a huge impact on where they were able to nest. And we have records of the time that some years their populations were enormous, and the next year they might only see a few hundred flying through their town and then millions again. So we don't know all the impacts that affected their population, but hunting definitely impacted their numbers. Looking at old photos of people holding passenger pigeons made me crunch the numbers in my head and I realized that my great grandma, whom I knew really well as a child, uh, was actually born about a decade and a half before the passenger pigeon went extinct. With this being such a recent extinction, many museums have taxidermy specimens. I went to the Bean Museum in Provo, Utah to see one for myself. I walked past case after case of taxidermy bird specimen until I found what I was looking for. One lone passenger pigeon. It's a bit surreal to be face to face with a taxidermy mount like this of a species that numbered in the billions and just over a hundred years ago went extinct. The display had a couple of model recreations to give people a better idea of what the passenger pigeon looked like in life. The specimen itself was taxidermied over a hundred years ago and the eye was set a little too far back making it look very lifeless. But it's interesting that this species may once again live in America. There are efforts by scientists to clone this species and reintroduce it in the wild. Not just to see if it can be done, but to restore the health of an ecosystem back east that was lost when billions of one species disappeared. I made this video to promote awareness of a magnificent species that we only recently lost. My point seemed justified while filming as droves of people walked past without so much as a glance at the case, despite the enormous 10-foot wide display on passenger pigeons that the museum had made. 
I think wildlife conservation is very important, and putting a face on recently extinct species is a good way to help. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos on wildlife and recently extinct species.